This is part three of lecture three, which is related to chapter three. In this part, we want to talk about local movement and Doppler shift. In the previous part, what we tried to do was to relate the strange things which happens in the multipath environment to change the rules of coverage. And then finally, we related everything with a parameter which was distance, power, gradient that we can measure experimentally. That was more or less what we did in part two. And here I we want to talk about another strange thing which happens in the radio channels and in the mobile environment in particular. This particular thing is effect of local movements and the so-called Doppler shift. This Doppler phenomenon is used in the radars as well. But we look at that a little bit differently for the communication applications. Assume you have like a mobile terminal in here and you have a fixed terminal in another place. The distance between these two guys is like D0. And then this guy starts to move with the velocity of Vm toward this guy. What he's doing, what he's sending is a narrowband signal, again a cosine. Okay? So as he's moving, his distance to this guy is changing. Okay. So that delay which exists for this guy is changing. Okay. So this is what which happens. The first thing is that the signal which arrives, the received signal, is like real part of something like a e to the j omega c times t minus something like tau zero at the beginning. At the beginning, this tau zero is equal to d zero over c. d zero is the distance between the two guys, two person. This is the distance, d zero. But this guy is trying to move now, moves in here with the velocity of v m. OK? And now we want to see what will happen. The other person who is sitting in here is listening is observing this signal as this guy is moving inside is moving toward he really rather than this tau zero for the delay is going to observe something like tau of t it's a delay which is function of time and that one is again distance as a function of time divided by c velocity of light which is the original distance d0 minus vm velocity times t divided by c. Make sense? So the receive signal is basically a carrier with some delay, but this delay, when this guy is moving, since the distance is moving, delay is changing. And that delay is a function of time is original d0 and it's losing the distance like at the speed of vm times d that's the distance that mobile has traveled okay so basically the delay that the guy who is sitting here is observing is something like something like tau 0 which is this d0 over c minus vm over c times t Make sense? Now, if I take these things and put it back to here, to my receive signal, my receive signal really is now something like real part of A e to the j times, let's say, 2 pi fc times t minus, rather than tau 0, I have tau zero plus vm over c times t. This is the signal that the person observes. Okay? If you want to look at the phase of this signal, now this is a phase. Phase is changing. Phase is changing. Phase is not constant. Okay? When phase is not constant, means what? Means 
you have to define something else, the rate of variation of the phase, which we usually refer to that as frequency. <coughs> if you want to just go to the frequency, I'm just writing the same thing. This is what I mean. A equals to e to the j times e to the j 2 pi times fc plus something like I call it wm or over c times t times e to the minus phi. This is my famous phi zero that I had before, j phi zero. Okay? So this was my phase, just like before, phi zero. See, what I did in here, I took this t and this t out, and then I had like 2 pi times, sorry, times fc in here. I have to put an fc in here. Okay. fc times w, uh, vm divided by c times t. I take it out, and this fc, I put it in here, I put it in here. Make sense? Huh? So, if I look at this as a phaser now, what is the phase of this phaser? This is the phase. What is the amplitude? This is the amplitude. What is the frequency of this phaser? The frequency of the phaser is this thing, which is no more Fc. It's Fc plus this thing. This thing I call it Fd, which is equal to Vm Fc over C. This is a constant. So my frequency is not Fc, it's Fc plus Fd. My sh so the person who is sitting at this point at the receiver is observing a frequency which is no more Fc. Is Fc shifted? How much shift? You calculate it from this. Vm times divided by C times Fc. Huh? So if I change my frequency from 1 gigahertz to 2 gigahertz, that shift is doubled. Huh? If I change it to 10, that shift is 10 times more. This particular thing is called this shift in frequency caused by what? By movement is referred to as Doppler shift. Doppler shift. In radar, if I calculate this shift, I can tell you what is your speed. Okay? But in our case, this is not the case. Okay? This is just a phenomenon that impact our communication. If I have like an OFDM system, for example, this FD changes my carrier and makes the makes some challenges for the design of the receiver. Okay? And it has other things. If I have an adaptive equalizer, since I have rate of variations due to the shift, I have to adapt to those rates. Okay? But we will see that later on. At this stage, I wanted just to introduce the phenomenon, the physics of this thing, physics of shift in frequency, how it is caused. And in summary, I mean from this very simple calculation, what you see is that if you have a transmitter and you have a receiver, and then and the guy who carries the transmitter is moving with the velocity of m toward the receiver, then if he's sending a frequency like fm, this guy receives that frequency fm plus a shift. So if he says 900 megahertz, he doesn't see 900 megahertz. He says 900 megahertz plus 100 hertz. Depends in, on, on the velocity of this guy and the speed of this guy. How do I see that shift in frequency? This is the equation. Velocity divided by speed of light times the frequency of operation. Make sense? So this is the basic thing. The basic principle behind 
movements and effect of that on your communication. Okay? The basic thing, very simple equation. Okay? So, if I'm moving along a path directly between these two, this is what I observe. Okay? So, this is my direct line of sight path. Huh? What happens to the other paths? I am in a multi-path environment. What will happen to the other paths? The other paths are arriving from different angles. When they arrive from different angles, what will happen? The speed is not this Vm. It's cosine of that arriving angle times Vm. So it's a slower speed. So for any other path, if I'm moving toward from one person to another person, the maximum Doppler shift is what? Is this value. So sometimes people refer to that in communication. They refer to that like FM, which is maximum Doppler shift. In radar, they refer it to FD. But in my case, I don't have one single shift. I have several shifts. Huh? Because I have several paths. Each path has its own. Now, but I know the maximum is this one because it's for VF. The others are going to be smaller than that, depending on the angle of arrival of the path. So, when I have like a multi-path environment, if I look at signal, a spectrum of the signal, I'm sending like a signal in a multi-path environment. I send a signal, like a cosine, for example, okay? A spectrum of this guy is something like that, okay? That's the Fourier transform of that. Now, when I, the received, if I have multi-path, this is single path, and no movement, no movements, no movement. Single, no move. Now, as soon as I start to move, this guy always is a cosine, but the frequency of this cosine is changing. How much this frequency changes, something like that. Whatever. I mean, always less than this. Whatever. Huh? But maximum frequency is FM, or FD if you want to call it, and minus FD. In between, I don't know how. These are for other paths. Okay? This is direct path. This is if I'm moving toward... This is if I'm moving against. When do you have moving against? Listen, let's say that I have a corridor. I have a box like this. When I'm moving toward this guy in this direction, okay, that's this one. And then I have another one which is like this, going in here, bouncing back and coming to here. Huh? That one is reverse, means the distance is going to actually increase. See, in here, if I'm moving in this path, direct path, as I move toward this guy, the distance gets decreased. But the path which goes like this, bounces in here, bounces in here. As I get closer to this guy, this path is actually increasing. Okay? So it has a reverse effect. So it's a two-way effect. Okay, so, but this one is getting too complex now. <laughs> it's getting too complex. We don't want to get into that, but we want to just get some experimental result now. We will get to, to that later on when we want to model it. And Clark actually is the person who modeled this for the cellular areas, I mean for the mobile radio application, and he has a very nice model for that, which he will show that in mobile environment, when you're in the streets, the spectrum is something like this. And then also, Jake's adds some stuff to mobile, uh, to work of Clark, and will teach us how to simulate it, actually. Okay? And that simulation will be one of our projects later on. But not today. Today is only just the physics. This is what which happens. Okay? Not even, this is not even physics. This is engineering, really, intuition. 
Okay, so the intuition that we got so far is that in summary, if I have like a transmitter and receiver and I'm just moving with the velocity of V, which means that I have a mobile application, the frequency gets drifted to this value in the line of sight. And from other paths, other things, which are definitely less than this. I know that it's less than this. Okay? Then, at this stage, we do only one experiment. Uh, first, some numbers. This example is of Doppler shift at 910 megahertz, which is frequencies around cellular. If I go 3 miles per hour, which is 1.33 meters per second which is like a pedestrian walk Doppler shift is around 4 hertz ok who cares about that this is the Doppler shift which is related to pedestrians people who are walking so for PCS applications ok at 900 megahertz frequencies so I have like a frequency maximum Doppler shift of like 4 hertz. If you go like 60 mile per hour 60 mile per hour is what? In the highways. I told you how to calculate the coverage for the highway for distance power gradient of war. Huh? Now how about Doppler shift for that? Doppler shift is around 80 hertz. Okay. Now in 1.82 gigahertz which is PCS bands for pedestrian, it is like 8 hertz. At 5.46 gigahertz, which is 802.11a, like a wireless LAN, this guy, I mean for a pedestrian, is 2.4. So if you go to the standard organizations, if you remember I had like different, they have different classes of movements. No move. Uh, and then you have pedestrian move. And then you have car. And then if you want to go more than that, is like trains or something like that, fast trains, several hundred kilometers. But anyways, for that frequency of operation, you can calculate all of them. Okay. But the standardization activities, they really, they give you the maximum Doppler shift. They don't give you the speed. They give the Doppler shift for that. But the relation between them is very, very simple. Okay, so this is about like having some intuition about the numbers. So you go to like JTC model, for example, something like that. I think they have for like indoor areas, something like 5 to 10 hertz Doppler shift. And when you go to like cellular applications, people have something like 100 hertz. For Doppler shift. These are two typical numbers that people use for indoor and outdoor. Outdoor assumption is that you have a car. Indoor assumption is you walk. So the difference is just because of the speed really. But in indoor you have much more paths as well. Doesn't make much of a difference in terms of maximum shift but it has difference in the shape of the spectrum. Okay? For indoor areas, some people, they assume like uniform Doppler spectrum. Some people, they assume that it's like Gaussian. And we will see example of that in different standards later on. For the mobile, everybody assumes this double ear that I showed you earlier, which was uh, Clark's model coming from the Clark's model. So basically there are some standard Doppler spectrum that people use for indoor and outdoor and then there are standard speeds pedestrian versus car speed. Okay, so there are, there are three shapes, two different bandwidths that people are using here and there for representing the Doppler spectrum. Doppler shift is like sh maximum, if you want to call it. Doppler spectrum is from all the paths. So you have a shape, which maximum is that ma maximum maximum is FM. Okay. Now let's now 
at this stage get some like uh, feeling uh, uh, I mean practical feeling about how you can do some measurements and relate it to Doppler spectrum. We are engineers. We want to do measurements and see what will happen. Okay. Basically, if you want to see the Doppler spectrum, what you do is that you look at your receive signal strength in time. See, up to now, I was I had like a static, like I had three paths, and time was fixed, and nobody was moving. Okay, I was taking everything. Now, in here, I have to see the movements. So what I do is that, like, I take a car, and inside the car, I put a receiver, and this receiver gets the what receive signal strength. Now, as I'm moving with the car, what will happen to receive signal strength? It starts to go up and down. Because of what? Because of multipath fading. Huh? Or I can come in an indoor environment and I do it. And create some movement, any movement, whether it's the antenna that moves, or whether or people who are moving around the antenna, they change the multipath infrastructure. They cut some. When I'm moving, I cut the paths. If two things are like two antennas are facing each other, I move in between. I change the paths which connect these two guys, so signal starts to change. Okay. Now, if you take the Fourier transform of the signal in time, that one gives you the Doppler spectrum. Fairly simple. This is an example that one of my students, Steve Howard, did. 14, 12, 12, 14 years ago for his part of his like, research. He takes two antennas and he does several examples, several tries. We do mostly indoor radio channel modeling. So first he puts the transmitter and receiver facing each other and then he calculates, he measures the receive signal strength. Nobody is moving. So the power doesn't move. Power stays the same. You take the Fourier transform of that you take a line at zero. Okay? In the second experience, what he does is he tries to move the antennas. He moves the antennas or forces people to move around the antennas or he does cyclic movements. Three different things. This top one that he has, if I remember correctly, was the one that people are moving close to the antenna. So a lot of change in the power. Okay. So there is two antenna facing only a few meter apart. Somebody comes in between, line of sight dies. And then it changes drastically. And then in time he records that for like 30 seconds. This is 0 to 30 seconds. So the power starts to move like this. And these movements are in order of 35 dB, which was the order of changes that we were expecting in multipath fading. But earlier we saw with respect to distance, this is with respect to time. The distance between transmitter and receiver is the same. People are moving around, multipath changes. In previous examples that I had, in the multipath, I had, I was changing the distance and multipath was changing due to distance. But anyways, when the multipath changes, power changes, and that changes in order of 30, 40 dB. And that's what you see in here. If you get the spectrum of that, this is the spectrum. The second one in here, what he does is that, this time, he takes the antennas, and randomly moves one of the antennas. The other one is fixed. So you just change the other one randomly up and down. So antenna polarization is changing. A multipath structure is changing. So that causes these changes. He gets the Fourier transform. This is what he says. The third one that he does is he takes one transmitter antenna and one receiver antenna. He keeps the one of them fixed. And the other one, he just moves it cyclically. 
like cyclic movements. So the power is like change a sort of periodically in here. Okay, and the Doppler spectrum is like that. Now, what is this? What is this? What does this one show? It's something like three hertz, four hertz. What what does it show? A speed of movements of the handle. What? It's Steve when he was doing the experiment. This one, the maximum is the maximum speed because he was moving randomly. Okay? And this one is the speed of people who are moving around the around the antenna. All of them are approximately the same, around the same, same value. But the shapes are a little bit different. In particular, this one has the cyclic shape because he's moving cyclically. So this one, I, I think that was an excellent experience and excellent derivation. Two just gives you a basic intuition about how Doppler shift works, how we can measure it, and how does it look in an indoor area. We come back to modeling later on. In this one, we are just giving the intuition. Okay. So, with that one, I can now go to my next part, which is multipad and wideband signaling. For that, uh, I would like to get a short pause so that we can change the video for a new video.